I've been doing this unfortunate train wreck of a show for a little over three years now, and I gotta say, researching and observing all sorts of game controversies, lawsuits, and people who may or may not have done very, very dumb things has gotten me stuck in a weird frame of mind. See, past controversies tended to be more interesting, more unique, and best of all, hilariously stupid. And on the opposite end, more modern and even recent game controversies tend to get high marks on the stupid factor, but gets the max on the eye roll factor, too. You don't get something as asinine as Death Race or Night Trap anymore, but of course that comes with the acceptance of more mature or questionable material in games, and better understanding of what the hell actually happens in the games rather than assuming the worst outright. But even with the occasional hatred here and there, useless piece of shit. That still doesn't make modern kerfuffles like DOAX3 and the Tracer Post shit any less unnecessary. But who knows, we're in a new year now, a couple game controversies have happened already, so maybe we'll be looking at something interesting today. Or not. I have no idea what this game is. Apparently it's the third entry in a series by the Tenchu folks over at Acquire, with the first two revolving around battling <laughs> by stripping off all their clothing. I'm not sure if there's a name for this particular niche, cause it is niche, but I'ma call them strip em ups. Boy, those strip em ups sure are the hot thing these days, ain't they? It's like those Newgrounds games found fresh life after all. To be fair, this entry seems to... <clears throat> strip out those particular aspects and plays more like a traditional JRPG. Doesn't make me any more interested, but at least now it doesn't look too dumb. Actually, hold up, that Newgrounds comparison isn't too far off. I mean, wow, this looks like paper cutouts animated with Flash. Ugh. So what have those crazy controversy gods whipped up for us today? Well, it has to do with the game's localization, by none other than those lovely folks over at Xseed. And I'm not being sarcastic this time, these guys are actually really cool folks. Back in mid-April, about less than a month before the game's western release, an issue with Xseed's localization arose into the gaming public's eye. But in an interesting twist on the usual stuff, the conflict was mostly internal. One of the members of the localization team, a Mr. Tom Lipschultz, disagreed vehemently with one of the changes made to the game, and thus decided to remove himself entirely from the game's credits. I'll get back to this later. The change in question had to deal with a sign in the game which was brought over from the original Japanese version, and the sign in question read out, KKK Witches. I assume you must be thinking two things right now. Firstly, why the hell is Moon Man involved in this game? K, 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 Ba, sicker than your average insurgent, twister against heads off, zergen, bucking sting zergen. And secondly, what the hell is up with that? Well, it's actually a bit complicated. See, in real life, there's a light switch company in Japan by the name of NKK Switches. And as you can probably now tell, the term KKK Witches is sort of a pun on that. But in addition, according to Japan, old crotchety witches make this sound. <laughs> so it's also a play on that too. Now, while Mr. Lipschultz found this hilarious, most of the other team members weren't too thrilled with the joke, for obvious reasons. So they took it out and replaced it with ACQ witches, which, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, what do I, an intellectual who knows leaps and bounds about useless trash, Think of this situation. Well, at first, it seems like we have a case of the old ultra censorship. Except it seems like this is a kind of synthesis that's so minuscule and forgettable that the only people who can truly be mad are those who are looking for something to be mad about. And I usually don't care for that kind of shite. However, like I said, this is a bit more complicated than the usual affair. And I'd go as far as to say that Xseed got themselves stuck between a rock and a hard place. See, XE could have left the joke in as it is for its western audience, but with that comes the potential for someone to point the sign out, show it to others, and soon many people will know about it. From there, at best they'll just be very confused, and at worst someone takes it the wrong way, resulting in the PR department over at XE having a very bad time. Conversely, they could take the joke out and replace it with something less volatile, but then people find out one way or another about that, and now the PR department and the localization team both have a very bad time. Clearly, Axie thought the latter was the better option, and it seems to have worked out somewhat decently, as it didn't blow up in their face, despite Senior Lipschultz's disapproval. Honestly, I don't care whether or not they should have removed it, neither option would have affected me in the slightest. 
But if I had a say in the final decision, for some odd reason, I'd probably go with replacing it too. However, let's get this out of the way before someone does get the wrong idea. It's not because I'm offended by seeing the three-letter word that could represent those awful human beings in pointy white hats. Because I'm not. I don't know much about localization. I will strongly admit that. But I think it's safe to say that sometimes things in the original product just don't translate well. I don't think the Western audience Exceed is aiming for, even if they do indulge in Japanese culture, will initially get the joke as intended. I mean, I sure never heard of NKK Switches before this whole shabamble. Similarly, I'm again assuming that most of you all watching right now are Westerners of some sort, so here's a question. Would you have been able to understand the intended joke on your own without me explaining it at all or without you looking it up in the process? I'm gonna say, unless you're really well versed in Japanese businesses or you're a Light Switch fan for some reason, I don't think you would've. It just doesn't make sense in that initial moment, and that's not how good jokes work. I suppose there's also the argument that this could make a good shock joke, but uh, no, sorry to disappoint, but that also doesn't work. I know some people will find it funny regardless, because dirty, dirty people get so triggered. <laughs> I've also seen some folks throwing around this Simpsons image in an attempt to discredit the joke change. Something about the clown guy naming his event in such a way that the acronym for the event reads KKK. But as much as I'd love to give these folks the credit they so righteously don't deserve, here's the difference between that and this. With the Simpsons case, firstly, that makes sense as a shock joke, and secondly, it's the fucking Simpsons, and the writers willfully intended for that joke to be what it is. Alright, here's the 411, folks. Say some gangsta is dissing your fly girl. You just give him one of these. Ooh, hey. On the opposite end, in Akaba's beat case, this doesn't make sense as a shock joke, and this is also not what the original writers intended. Funnily enough, Acquire actually didn't know about the other way this joke could have been taken when writing it. They just had that NKK switches slash witch sound pun in mind. And when this was pointed out to them by XC, they were nothing but supportive of the company making this slight change for the Western release. So yeah, looking at this fully, it does make sense for the joke to have been replaced. XEQ witches works way better than that too. As for Mincia Lipschultz, I have something a tad more abrasive for him. You're an idiot. I don't care how experienced in localization he is or what previous games he's worked on regardless of notoriety, which in all honesty makes this even worse. In this instant, he's an idiot. Removing yourself from the credits of a game just because of a tiny change in the localization that you didn't get control over is hardly honorable. And to me, he doesn't give off that he cares about preservation of the game's original form, but more so reeks of someone having a particularly high ego. Especially since this is the ground he chose to stand on. I've heard this anti-censorship attitude is kind of his shtick as well, so I probably shouldn't be surprised, but considering that according to XE's policy, since he's refusing credit for localization of Akuma's beat, he won't get credit for any future XE title he works on, I think he should have thought that one out a bit more carefully. Overall though, it seems everyone came out of this dire situation just fine. XC's reputation is intact, Mr. Lipschultz still has his so-called pride, and Westerners can now fully enjoy Akaba's beat. And anyone refusing to play this version because it doesn't contain their worthless shock joke can just play the Japanese version if they want to. Good luck transcribing that yourself though, turns out Japanese to English translation is quite hard. And despite the initial bad impressions of this controversy, I actually did find it to be quite interesting. Even if all I did was just mostly slag off idiots that speak before they think. So in the end, I guess, maybe there's some hope for modern game controversies after all. Or not.